time to add some extra complexity to our logic. We have our counter counting up every time a timer runs. Maybe I would like to enable, disable this flow from running. So I'm going to need an extra configurable button. And we've done this before. Let's have a look in our data miner. We've done this before using a health check. So we had a read component and a writable component. Now this time I would like to have the option between enable, disable, because I want to flow to either stop or to start running. So instead of having a slider, I want to have a toggle button, toggling between two different values. Now let's go to our definition and use the same steps as always. We're going to use our snippets. And again, it's a displayed component, so I'm going to use the displayed part. I'm going to give it ID 12, a loop, counter, state. And this will represent the configuration of the counter flow. Now, as you can see, that this is basically the same thing as we've done for our health check. We gave it a name, we gave it a description, um, some info for the tooltip. It's internally still a number. Now, I've mentioned I want to pick disabled, enabled. Those are words. Then why did I pick a number again? Well, internally, I could represent this to 0 and 1. And this is a smaller component. It's not a large text, so internally, memory-wise, it's a smaller thing to keep track of. So internally, I'm going to use 0 and 1. Still, on display as a human being, I don't want to see 0, 1. I would like to see enabled or disabled. So I need to translate this. Now, translating, making sure on screen I see something different than internally, that's where the measurement comes in. Previously, we had our health check as well. We had our example with the loop counter where we had an analog bar. So on screen, we showed something different. In this case, it will be represented differently as well. So the zero needs to become disabled. For this, I'm going to use a type called discrete. You will find it as well. And again, via the snippets, um, I will find discrete in here as well. But, um, discrete. Now, a discrete, as you see, is a translation between display and value. In my case, I have multiple. And it's also why I see the small warning indication. I'm missing something. I can have multiple combinations of this. So I'm going to add a overall tag, XML component, so I can group them together. Now you can see this is a displayed value. What do I want to show on screen? Disabled and internally, I want this to be zero. I can do the same, just copy paste for the enabled internally enabled is one. So now I have defined a read component. Internally, it's a number. The value zero will represent on screen displayed. Value one will represent enabled. Now I'm not finished yet. This is just the read component. Remember, we had a writable component as well. We can simply create it with generate a write params. We get our wizard again. I will keep the same offset, keep that structure in my logic, and I'm going to use that setter component. As soon as I click on it, I want to copy the value of my writable param into my read param. So I hit OK, and we can see our param 62 popping up. Now it's not displayed yet, so I'm going to choose my configuration page. I'm going to, for instance, add it in here, add my right as well. Now it would be nice when I have my configuration, I can actually see the value that it has impact on as well. So I'm going to keep my counter displayed on my data page as well. 
Now I imagine you don't want to see it on your uh, second column. You can still just select them all, drag them to wherever you want it. So now I'm going to have two columns. That means my page will be split in two. And on one side I will have my health check, on the other one I will have my counter and the loop counter state. Let's apply. This is purely display, so there's no logic running yet, but we can already have a look on our system. So let's go to the data page and I have my health check and on the other side I have my counter. My counter still running as mentioned there's no logic yet and i have my loop counter state now remember we see not initialized that means that there is no value in there for this case for a state i would not recommend keeping it empty it's best to set a default value in there we've seen that before so let's apply it on this bottom as well so we have our loop counter state and I'm going to add a default value. Default value is the internal value. So it's zero or one, whatever you want to pick. In my case, I just want to have it disabled by default. So I'm going to set zero, zero because zero represents disabled. When I publish this, we will now have a disabled value in there. When I click it, we have enabled and I can toggle between the two as many times as I want. Now we would like to add some logic in here as well. So as soon as I hit enabled, it should start running the counter. And when it's disabled, it should stop counting. How do we do this? Now I can add logic as we've done before. We add a condition on something. So we have our timer and our timer is running our to-do. So I could say, well, whenever my state is disabled, my timer shouldn't perform its to-do anymore. So, well, yeah, I can add a condition here, my timer, and I can add something in here as well. But this is my timer. This is on my regular base. And I could have other to-dos in here as well. So every 10 seconds, I would like to run this, but also another to-do list and another to-do list and another to-do list. So maybe timers isn't the perfect place to add a condition for this group. Even when there is only one item in here, as we have in this example, I would still not recommend using a condition on a timer. Because the timer is the only component that will behave a little bit differently when there's a condition on it. It will check its time. Is it time for me to run my content? Yes, it is. And then it will check. Is my condition met? If not, I will just linger here. I will continuously check. Can I execute it? Can I execute it? I'm already there. Please let me run my content. So only in exceptional cases, there's almost no reason why this condition should not meet. Then I will run my group. I would like to avoid conditions on timers at all costs. Of course, there are always exceptional cases and that's why condition is available. Always think about your situation. Do I want to linger here? Because there's a downside. It will constantly check and there's a load coming along with that. So conditions on timers, for our case, not the best idea. Then where do I put it? Well, I mentioned a group is my to-do list. And in my to-do list that I have in my logic, it's only going to run that loop counter. And that's what I want to stop or run in our case. So I can put my condition on this to-do list. Let's add a condition, same formatting. So whenever my configuration param, what's my configuration param? It's the 
but on 12, when this is equal to 1, when it's enabled, I would like to run the content of my group. So my timer will take that to-do list and it will check, should I run my content? Yes or no. When it's enabled, I'm going to run my content. If it's not, so this condition is not met, it will not do anything with the content. So this seems the logic I require. I have my toggle button there, I could enable, disable it, previously tested, and I have a timer which will run my group. If my param 12, so my value of my configuration param is enabled, then it will run its content. Otherwise, it will not. Let's hit the publish button and see if this is running nicely. Let's go to the data page and, well, wait a minute, I had enabled previously. I kept it on enabled. Now, what did I miss again? I've mentioned it during the previous exercises as well. When I do not define that I have to store it, it will not store. So what happened? It returned to my default value. Now next to this, I can also see that my sessions aren't increasing. So my logic that I've added actually works. But every time I will restart my element, this configuration is not stored. So let's hit the restart in here as well, state, and I can restart. And you will see that my value is again disabled. Let's try it again. It's clearly enabled. I'm going to restart my element and we see that we are back to our default value. I want to avoid this. How do I do this? It's quite simple. I go to my bottom and I'm going to say, well, I would like to save this. Yes, please do save it. So what will happen as soon as we have value in here, it will store it into a database. When I restart my element, my data will be there. Let's hit the publish button, have a look. So now it wasn't saved before, so it returned to the default value. I'm going to enable it. And this time I'm going to restart my element, have a look. And there we go, we have enabled. Let's take a moment and go over the logic we've already implemented. Let's see if we forgot about some things or not. So we want to have a counter counting up every time our timer was run. We have a timer every 10 seconds. We count it up until 5. When it reaches to 5, I want it to reset again and go back to 1. I also wanted to have a configurable part. I wanted to enable or even disable that logic to run. I click on disable, it stopped. When I hit enable, it started up again. Now let's see if this is actually working quite nicely with a interaction as well. Let's go over and do some validation tests. We have enabled my current state and it is running quite nicely. When I hit disabled, it is stopping. This is correct. Let's hit enabled again and we can see it's jumping to three. Let's do a few more tests. Let's go back to disabled, enabled. Now it didn't change. And let's do another test. Disabled. Enabled. I would expect when I hit enabled that it will start doing things again. Same as for the startup. At startup, I mentioned that I have my default value. It would immediately jump to three. You can test this again and say restart. We have our counter and it went from three to four. And I would expect the same thing to happen when I hit the disabled button. Now, why is this not 
happening. Let's investigate our development and see what's going on. So what I want is as soon as I hit my writable component, I want my logic to verify should it run or not, all depending on what the value is. So it could be disabled or enabled, but as soon as I hit it, it should recheck this, same as it does at startup. So I would expect something linked to my writable component. Well, the only thing I have currently is my read component. Still, my logic does run correctly when it's enabled, it's running. When it's disabled, the counter is not running. Now, why is this? Well, we actually only verified the initiation by timer. We didn't check the interaction part. So person can select a new configuration. We have our timer initiating things, and then we verify. But this to-do list is not started via the interaction. Let's go and add that as well. What I need to do is have a trigger on this uh, change of writable component. We can add this by just clicking on that um, triangle. We have our generate new trigger on change. Well, as soon as something change, I want to do something or I want an action to take place. I will call this 62. Why? Because my param has ID 62. I'm going to call this on change loop counter. Let's make this a capital L. And it will run an action with ID doesn't exist yet, 62. What should it be doing? Well, I want to run my to-do list again. So I will have an action, just an action with the ID. Let's go back, 62. And I want to run loop counter flow, for instance. And this is my ID of my group because it's the group I want to re-execute. So I will have ID 11, what, it's a group. What do I want to do? I want to execute. Execute means I'm going to grab that to-do list. Imagine I already have dozens of to-do lists. I already have a stack piled up of things I have to start doing. Now, I just don't want to add it to that list or that pile. I want it to be added on top. That's the first thing you need to do. Because it's the interaction, I want it to have priority over something that happens on a regular basis. So it should be done as soon as possible. I click on something and I want to have an immediate effect. How do we do this? Well, we just indicate do it the next thing in line. Why the next thing? Well, I don't want to break whatever you're currently doing. I don't want to impact it. But the next thing you do, the very first thing you do, will be this one. You will refresh it. So let's hit the publish button and see how our result looks like. So our state was still enabled. Let's just have a look if the logic is not broken. It jumped to 5. Let's wait and see if it's still going to 1. It will reset and go back to 1. There we go. Let's disable it. Now, as mentioned before, disabling, I will not have a visual effect. So let's hit the enabled again. And we see an immediate change. Remember, previous test, we could see it as well. Let's check it. Again, we have an immediate effect. Now, how come in our previous test, we did have a, a moment where we hit on enabled and it did change, while well, that timer is still running in the background. So when we just happen to be clicking on our configuration when the timer time is run, or is almost going to run, we have a shorter wait time. The maximum wait time we would have had was the 10 seconds, almost 10 seconds, maybe 9 dots, whatever, the 10 seconds. So it could be that sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. We'll have a look if the interaction is there. 
it might be linked with the timing you have a regular time it will perform something and if you just happen to be close to that time in your interaction it might feel you have changed it or you have initiated it while it's actually that iteration so be careful when testing be a self-critic on it as well